Now, I get lots of questions with regards to this camper, but there's one polarizing item on this camper that splits people's opinions, and it's that thing sitting on the roof. The Dometic Harrier Light rooftop air conditioner. And today, we're gonna have a chat about that. Hey guys, I'm Daryl and welcome to the channel. Now that thing up there, as I said in the intro, the Dometic Harrier Light rooftop air conditioner. I get so many questions about it. Very polarizing. Um, I get a lot of questions that are fair and reasonable. Like how much does it weigh? Does it turn the inside into an ice cube? Lots of things like that. I also get so many crusty old buggers hassling me about it. You know, you don't need that when you go away. You need, need to take the essentials. But anyway, today, I'm going to broach the subject of using it off grid and as I said up until now I haven't done that however I've now got more battery power and I've never really tried it out and I was quite surprised when I did try it out. So it's about half past eight at night it's 14.2 degrees outside it's pretty chilly I'm figuring it's too cold for air conditioning so let's try heating from what I've seen, the heating actually takes more oomph out of the battery than air conditioning. So we have 200 amps, we've got two 100 amp batteries in parallel, we've got 99.2% charge. I figure we'll set the air conditioner on auto, we'll put it at say 19 degrees to start with, and see if it works one and two, how much current it takes out of the battery system running for one hour because it should um, it should cycle on and off now as you can see in the camper we're running the lights on the air conditioner and to be honest it's probably all the lighting that you need I don't have any 12 volt hooked up to the camper at the moment so this is all we've got let's turn this on and it's set on auto heat and off it goes. So we'll set a timer for one hour and we'll check back in occasionally and see how it's going. A few moments later. Okay, so we've got about 35 minutes left on the timer. We're sitting on 94.1. So we're nearly halfway and we've used 5% of our battery capacity. Outside, if we remember, it was about 14, 14 and a half degrees. We're now sitting on 20.3. It got up to 20.7. I've had to change the display, the auto uh, cut off to 21 to get up to here. And it's a very comfortable space inside here. It is absolutely freezing outside. Although I'm just in a t-shirt in here and it's fine. With regards to amp usage, it's currently sitting on 2.5 amps and I've seen a maximum of 40 amps, but that was probably for a 30 second gap. When it duty cycles and it comes on, it's probably staying on for a minute or two. Since its initial duty cycle, when uh, the heating came on and brought it up to temp, it hasn't come back on. It's just been sitting there at, at two and a half amps. According to this, I've got 40 and a half hours of usage left. Eventually. So we've got about 10 minutes on the timer left. I've left this temperature gauge outside and when I came back it was 10 degrees. I've just been miking up and it's now up to 12 in here. We're about double what the temperature is outside. Now it's cycled once since I went back inside after the last shoot I did. It got up to about 31 amps at that point and again it probably went for two or three minutes. At this point we've got about 90.5 or just under that left so we've used nine percent and at the moment it's pulling 2.38 amps later that same evening okay i've got just over three minutes to go we've used just over 10 percent of the battery power with the light off it draws about half an amp less i mean at the, at the moment with the light on we're sitting at 2.27 just to go over things, uh, it is 10 degrees Celsius outside. It is 20.9 inside the camper. So we're in for another hour. I'd like to see what a two hour stint is, if it's consistent, because it is getting colder outside. One hour later. Well, everyone, 
we've got a minute 57 to go. So we've nearly been running for two hours. I just wanted to show you what the temperature gauge is. I've got it outside the camper, I'll just grab it. It is 8.2 degrees. <laughs> so that means this air conditioner is working harder to keep this at around the 20, 21 degrees. And it is very comfy in here. So at the two hour mark, we've used just under 19% of our battery capacity. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Now that's with 200 amps of battery. They're the Renergy 100 amp versions. They're about the $700, $720 each. If you can, there's a few discount codes if you go looking for them. So we've got what, 1400 bucks worth of battery. Uh, we're running the King's 1500 watt inverter that keeps surprising me. I keep, I keep looking at it thinking, I don't know. It's a $200 inverter. Um, it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be running this. However, tonight, the fans on it haven't even come on. Um, albeit it is cold outside, it's powering this thing through no problems whatsoever. Do I think it's a long-term item? I don't know. <laughs> Some of the King stuff seems to be okay, some of it doesn't. Another way to look at it is that it's a, it's a very cheap way to get yourself going, and when it finally does die, instead of having to buy all of your items at once, um, upgrading one item to a better inverter than that is, is probably not too hard on the pocket. And, and that's what I've, I'm sort of doing with this camper too, with the electronic side of it. The initial splash, was a reasonable amount of money. Now that's over and we've had the camper on the road for you know, quite some time, although with COVID lock, lockdowns, not as much as what I'd like, I am going to take the opportunity to upgrade the electronic unit in it with the new box. But anyway, we'll talk about that another time. Now I'm pretty happy with that. To use 10% of our battery capacity on 200 amps every hour, I think it's pretty good. I do have another battery there, so we can have 300 amps of battery power, which means we'll be using less than 10%. It may be, what, 7.5% or something. So the question now remains, with the added battery capacity, with, you know, up to 300 watts of I've got here, and the ability to now run the reverse cycle air conditioner off-grid and an induction hot plate, which we don't use an induction hot plate all that much. Uh, I tend to cook on the Weber barbecue. That, that's my mainstay with my cooking. How do we charge it all back up? I've got 250 watts of solar panels on the roof. I figure if I get a good solar blanket, that'll supplement what's on the roof of the camper. And combined with charging from the vehicle, I reckon we'll be okay. And I also know that my partner likes to run into a caravan park every few days and stay the night so she can shower and, and everything. So I, I think with a hook up every, you know, three or four days, we're fine. I'm pretty chuffed, gotta be happy with that. I never thought I'd be able to run this reverse cycle air conditioner off grid. I suppose just luckily, uh, I haven't paid all that much to, to get in the game. Um, I suppose at some point, I'd like to upgrade the inverter to something that I know is gonna work every time I turn it on. It does worry me that when I start the King's inverter, um, I press the button, the lights come on, nothing happens. I wait for a couple of seconds and press it again, and off it goes. And But tonight it's run faultlessly. Fans haven't even come on. You have gotta be happy with that. So it's the next day, pretty happy with how that worked last night. I think the addition of a third battery, so I've got 300 amps of power, is going to be an absolute game changer for us going forward with regards to this thing. And getting some better quality battery management, I see that as a good thing going forward also. Um, now a couple of little party tricks this air conditioner does, apart from the reverse cycle heating and cooling. It will just go into fan mode, so very similar to one of your fantastic roof vent things with the fan in, uh, it will just circulate air within the cabin. Um, it also has a dehumidifier mode. And if you're in a confined space, multiple people both breathing in and out, the moisture that you breathe out forms into condensation. Uh, and whether, you know, there's a whole lot of, of people who make these things saying, oh, I don't get condensation because this is how I've built it. You've got some sort of air movement to stop it. If you're in a sealed box, um, you will get condensation. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, 
it will pull out that condensation out of the air. So in a dehumidifying mode, it doesn't heat nor cool. It just pulls out the water, the water vapor out of the air, which, which is not a bad thing. All in all, I think it's a really good unit. You do get what you pay for. The air conditioner also has a couple of timers. It has a start and stop timer, so you can set when it starts or stops. I can't see where you'd use the, um, the start unless you know that you're gonna wake up at a certain time and you'd like it toasty, warm or cool inside. The stop timer I can see that you would use, although I haven't at this point. Um, like we're going to, to bed now and it'll turn off in half an hour or an hour. Uh, I can see that. It's a fairly good unit. It's an inverter based compressor. Uh, it seems quite efficient. It doesn't, uh, it has a soft start up, uh, so it's not hitting the inverter with massive amounts straight up. It does build up, um, which, which seems to work really well with this smaller inverter. And I'm, as a, again, I'm fairly amazed that the 1500 watt inverter um, has, has run it because when you look at the documentations on when people are selling inverters, um, it's like, oh, 1500 watt inverter, you can, run your coffee machine off it and that's basically it. But anyway, you get what you pay for. I'm really happy with it. Uh, I think the 30 kilo difference over just having a fantastic fan or the like, because they're about four or five kilos by themselves. For us, it's well worth it. We can go away. We've got a really comfortable bed where we can control the climate within the cab uh, and it makes for a really nice holiday. But that's about it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed that, that overview and testing and everything and we'll see you next episode. Bye now.